Hey YouTube, it's me, your girl Viv, and guess what? We're here for another issue of the Veterans Lounge. Another episode of the Veterans Lounge. I'm gonna take my mask off since I'm sitting outside. And I am out here with my friend, Miss Maria. How you doing? Doing good. And she has, um, you know, agreed to do an interview with me for the Veterans Lounge. And today we're gonna to be talking about um, LGBTQIA+ in the military yeah. and being a veteran and how it's affected you, how it affected you and you know what you went through while you were in the military. Okay. All right. So, so this is my girl, Maria Key. Hi. I'm not going to tell y'all the rest of her name. This is <laughs> Maria Key. And um, she and I, we met here in town. Cool young lady. Come on, Pass Truck. Come on, Pass Truck. <laughs> y'all, they doing a lot of work in our town. I told y'all I live in a small town, but they be doing a lot of work here. But um, I first started noticing Maria when she would come through the line when I was working at the wall, uh, the uh, pool line. Yep. So that's when I first seen her. And then I would see her at the gas station. She was always cool. Like, hey. She was like, hey, how you doing? <laughs> And so then I found out we had mutual friends. Yeah. Which was cool. Um, so once I found out that she was part of military, you know, I asked her, um, could she come do an episode of the Veterans Lounge? And she agreed. So first question I'm going to ask you, what branch of the military were you in? Um, I was in the Air Force. I did uh, six years active duty. Six years active. Okay. Are you um currently at... Uh, Reserves or anything like that? No. No. Um, I, so I've been out now. It'll be eight years this April. Um, so after the first two years, that time frame that we have at the end of our contracts is is up. So I fulfilled six. You're, if you get out before eight years total active service, you're required to spend. Um, basically, you can be called back at any point in time during that, you know, two, four, however many years it takes to add up the eight. So after the first two years, that was that was done. But, you know, with the way things are going, if they said, hey, we need you, I'm you there. On, you on the way back. Yeah. Okay, so, I'm gonna talk to you about that later. But okay. first off, all right. So, you were in during what years? I was in from 08 to 14. Okay, so you were in during the um, Don't Tell, Don't Ask. Yeah. And yeah. you were in during the Repeat. Re repeat. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so first off, let me ask you this. When did you first, um, what do you identify as? Uh, I'm currently, uh, I guess it's kind of a hard, rock in a hard place kind of thing because I can remember as a little kid going, man, my life would just be so much easier if I was a guy. But I am a woman, and I'm okay with being a woman. I could eat the teat any time, and I'd be okay with that, too. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of, I guess you could say gender fluid, but my pronouns are she, her right now. So I, I would say I identify more as a woman than I do anything. Okay. And so you call yourself gender fluid. You wouldn't say that you're, um, uh, so because you're she, her, you're not transsexual because you were born a woman. Correct. Okay. And so would you call yourself? Uh, a lesbian or bisexual? Uh, I, I would or? identify as a masculine lesbian. Okay, all right. And you guys, I'm just asking these questions, and I'm not trying to be um, disrespectful or anything, but I want to get the right, I want to get everything right. Yeah. You, you understand? So, with that, did you know that you were a, a lesbian when you went into the military? Yes. Okay, so how did that affect you when you first went into the military and you knew it was don't ask, don't tell? Um, well, honestly, it just played right back into my, my upbringing. I was raised right down the road in Augusta, you know, being in the, in the South, we're so Christian-oriented that, you know, I, I grew up really fighting who I was because my faith had told me from a young age that feeling the way I was feeling was wrong. So for a long time, I would deny, deny, deny. I, I would date men, um, but I never got the fulfillment out of that that I do now 
as an adult. Um, and I came out to my parents. I was 17, 18. It was right before I joined. I joined at 19. Um, but I, I came out to my parents then. But really, when Don't Ask, Don't Tell was still in play, it was kind of like, okay, I just go back to doing everything I've done in the past. Um, but what a lot of people don't understand, and a lot of people have asked this, is, well, if you're being your most true, authentic self, how would you, how were you able to do that? And because my true, authentic self is putting others first. That's who I am in everything. I always put others first. So for me, putting myself back in the closet to be able to serve a higher purpose, it was easy. Okay. So how did you deal with, because I know if it was a, I, was it any threats of anyone outing you? Um, I did have one instance. I um, I had met a girl while I was in AIT. Um, so my initial training for my uh, first career field um, and we began dating and we dated for like three years and one night um, I went out with some of my co-workers and I spent the night in at one of one of the apartments um, just because it was late and I didn't feel like driving all the way back to base because base was 30 minutes from town got you it's usually um, like that I don't yeah. know why we always end up in some place a God forsaken West <laughs> Bump Flip. Oh, I was in Netherlands. I was in North Dakota, so you can just imagine. Oh God. Um, it's already BFE. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I I had forgot. The next morning I woke up. I got up. I came back to base, and I had forgotten my phone. My phone had fallen out in their couch, and I had text messages from my significant other at the time. Luckily, this guy that. Who, whose house it was at. I, I crashed him and his girlfriend let me sleep on their couch that night. And uh, luckily they were cool. She was a civilian. He was in the military. And he brought me my phone back. And he was like, look, I didn't see anything. And that was the closest I came to slipping up, I guess you could say, during that time frame. Um, I mean, obviously when and you... What could have happened to you if someone would have outed you? Oh, well, during Don't Ask, Don't Tell, I would have been discharged. Would they have discharged you with a medical discharge or would it have been a bad conduct discharge? Because it didn't happen, I don't know. Um, I do know that people that identified as transgender during that time were discharged under a medical discharge for the fact that, and st some people still do view it this way, but being transgender is a mental illness. Um, I was going to ask you about that too because you know, you know, um, homosexuality, transsexuality, things of that nature, that used to be in the DSM 4 mm -hmm. or the DSM, I think 3, 2, 3, something like that. Yeah. Then they think they took it out in 4. So it used to be in the DSM. But yeah, uh, probably, it, it was probably been classified as a general discharge, not necessarily bad conduct discharge because I wasn't a bad airman. Um, but because I wasn't, I it probably would have been labeled failure to conform. Okay. So, okay. So because how was it with you? Okay. Did you work around mostly men or mostly women or was it a, it was a good mix. mix. Um, I, so I started out my career as an air traffic control apprentice. Um, and the military in general, is still a male dominated career field um but we did have a good mix of males and females in my work center now when i um reclassified and went for retraining i worked in my command section for a little while doing like secretarial work for the squadron commander mm -hmm. and that was mostly women in that instance um but w even when i got to my next career field in arizona it was a good mix, male, female, there as well. Well, the reason I ask that is because, like with me, I was supply when I was in the military. And what I found out is that I had to work twice as hard, twice as smarter. To get the... Uh, against my male counterparts. Mm -hmm. Just to get that little bit of respect. Exactly. Yeah. Did you have that issue? No. And I think, you know, because I joined in 2008. 
Um, I think after 9-11, a lot of that kind of started to change. Maybe not completely, but started to change because we realized that, you know, women first started to serve, you know, I, I can only attest to Air Force history, but the first time we really see women serving in a, even a combat capacity was the Korean War, as far as the Air Force goes. Um, so... I mean, you even, know, because, even, well, during the Civil War and things of that nature, they had women that served, they usually served as medics. Yeah, and that's, and, and that's you see that a lot, nurses, medics, things like that. You know, if you've seen the movie Pearl Harbor, mm -hmm. the, the women that they follow were all nurses. nurses. Right. But you really start seeing women as mechanics and doing other things like that around the time Vietnam, Korea, kind of transitioning there from Vietnam to Korea. Um, we're, we're actually putting women in a more male-dominated career field. Um, the job that I did as a command, and compost, uh, command post controller um, was kind of sort of like a more female-oriented career field. It was behind a door, it was sitting at a computer, it was, I flew a desk. Is how he said it in the Air Force. You know, people ask me if I flew a plane, I flew a, flew a desk. desk. Got you. Um, paper pusher. Right. Um, so, so it was more clerical. Okay, so. All right. So after, okay, so how did you see your life changing after after the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell? I mean, honestly, the day-to-day -day didn't change. It, it really wasn't the day-to-day -day things that changed for me. It was just being able to be me, right. you know, and actually really truly being my authentic self around my coworkers. Um, you know, I didn't hide the fact that I had a girlfriend or something like that, or, oh, you know, this is just my roommate kind of thing. Gotcha. Um, not that, and, and that's the other thing, you know, when, you, when you're in that kind of a position, you know, you, when you go out, to the bars or something like that, you're like, oh man, you know, the, the, the hopping place down in Arizona was a gay bar, right? Like, that's where we went to have fun, but I couldn't go there until Don't Ask, Don't Tell was repealed because I didn't want to get caught. Because gotcha. what if, you? because you always had to think about the, the what if. What if I meet someone that I truly like? Or, no, or what if somebody else is in the community and is there and sees me, but they're facing heat, so they offer me up as a token. Gotcha, not gotcha. That, not that you, obviously not that that's something that I would hope, but that's something you had to plan for. That's something right. you had to be aware of. So I would always have you ever heard of anybody doing it? No, I hadn't. But you know, just in the back of your mind, it's just something that that you have to think of when you're in that kind of a situation. Um, in fact, the the first time that. You know, I ever said anything. We were working in the um, Air Ops Command, mm -hmm. um, and I was working nights, and I was there by myself, and I was just sitting at my desk doing my little bit of paperwork I need to do at the beginning of my shift. And another guy that worked in another section, so it was this big open floor but with cubicles all over. Um, he came over and he leaned on my console and he said, "So, you in the family?" And this was just a couple weeks before "Don't Ask, Don't Tell" was actually fully repealed and I was like what, what family? do you mean <laughs> yeah I'm in a family yeah like what, what do you mean and um yeah I have a family it's at home <laughs> yeah um but he he was also gay and I knew that I mean gay men are just a little bit more flamboyant for whatever reason I I don't understand that but I guess I present more masculine um so I guess compared to a woman I guess you could say I'm a little more flamboyant than a, a feminine lesbian would be. But um, being able to actually say a, in the workplace, yeah, yes, I am. Uh, yeah. It, it felt liberating. It really did. It felt liberating. Okay, so now you're no longer in the military. Correct. Okay, so how long have you been married? Uh, we've been married seven years. Okay. Y'all. And she just had a, the most beautiful little boy. Most beautiful little boy. She got the most precious little girl. Yeah. So, um, and her wife is a wonderful lady. Now, I'm going to tell you this. I'm doing this interview with you 
part of it is because of selfish reasons. And I'm going to tell you why I'm being oh. selfish. <laughs> okay. Because you know I can be selfish and petty. Oh. You know, a lot of my, not my subscribers, but there are a lot of people on YouTube that, that for the longest time thought I was a lesbian. When I kept telling them, I'm not lesbian. Yeah. They're like, yeah, you are. I'm like, why? Because your hair is short. That doesn't mean anything. I'm like, okay, I'm going to tell my cousin who's married to a woman that both of their hair is down at her back. Tell them because their hair is long, they're not, they're not, you know, mm -hmm. they're, they can't marry, be married to you. Like that. So that's, I laugh about that all yeah. the time. That's my joke. <laughs> But um, the other reason I wanted to do this is because I wanted people to understand that um, you can have a fulfilling life in the military, even as you know, yeah. as part of the um, LGBTQI plus community. <laughs> yeah. And so, what do you? What would you say to a young person that is um, part of the LGBT? part of the family yeah. and they decided they wanted to go into the military do it do it because and do it make sure you're doing it for the right reasons and, and it, it can be whatever reason it is you know um i was 19 i'd been in augusta for my entire life i'd gotten to go on little trips here and there but i hadn't seen really outside of my little bubble um my dad sat me down and talked to me and said, Hey, look, I don't want you to be a waitress for the rest of your life. Um, I really think you should put the military on your list of things that you might want to look into. Um, and I did. And, you know, what, once I signed the paperwork, that's when, because it was kind of like a, I get to go away. I get to get out of Augusta. I get to be somewhere else and get away from everything I've ever experienced and do something different. But once I signed those paperwork and I, and I took that oath, it became more than just an escape. Even though at the time I hadn't gone through basic training, I didn't have the discipline that they gave me. I didn't have the work ethic that they gave me. I didn't have the drive that they gave me. I still had that sense of, I'm serving my country. So if that's what you really want to do, I mean, they, you got tuition assistance while you're in. So if you're active duty while you're in serving, they will pay for your college as long as you pass the class. And then you can say... As long as you pass the class with a certain grade. Because you can't pass. D's do not get degrees. I'm sorry, y'all. D's do not get <laughs> degrees. That's true. I, I be, It might have changed between then and now, but it, it, before it was a C or better, they would pay for your class. Um, so you can actually go to school and save your GI Bill for down the road. If you want to go ahead and get a, you know, a bachelor's and a master's degree while you're in, and then turn around and go get a bachelor's and a master's degree in something else when you get out and use your GI Bill for that, you can do that. Now that they the have other the transferables. Thing, the other thing is, most people don't realize this. When you go to college and you're in the military, that um, part of your military do to count as Part of your basic classes. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, when I got my degree at Fayetteville State University in Fayetteville, North Carolina, <laughs> Bronco Pride, you know. <laughs> um, when I got my degree um, at Fayetteville State, what I found out was that I didn't have to take the PE class. Mm -hmm. your basic I didn't have class. to take the. Uh, uh, the personal one-on-one -on -one classes it was like a whole bunch of classes that i didn't have to take because military took up all those credit of, hours right yeah right so which means that it didn't take me as long to get my degree That's correct. as it would have someone else yeah and see like one of the, the one of the benefits of the air force now again things may have changed between now and then but at the time when i was in the air force the air force was the only service that had their own college and I'm not talking the Air Force Academy. I'm talking about the Community College of the Air Force. Oh, so okay. you actually, when you were in the Air Force, when you go through your training, as long as you complete, you know, your basic training counted toward it, your, you know, your NCO school counted toward public speaking and, and that kind of thing. But 
you know, your other classes that you have to take, your cores and your electives that you have to take through school, if you finish those, you get an associate's degree from the Air Force really? for your career field. I didn't know that. Yeah. So, I didn't know that. So the Air Force got, got some good stuff. Yeah. I mean, they really do. And, I mean, of course, we all have this laughing, ha-ha, you're a jarhead, you're, a, you're the chair force, you know, all this kind of thing. But um, Each branch of service had their, their um, own set of uh, pros yeah, exactly. and cons. And see, like, a lot of people pick fun at the Air Force because of our accommodations. Um, you know, you go to an Air Force base and you stay in one of their hotels and it's almost like going to, you know, a nice hotel down the street, oh, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah, because guess what? Guess what? That's where I always try to go. I always try to hit an Air Force base. <laughs> yeah. Air Force or Navy. Mm -hmm. Air Force or Navy. But see, but see that, and I don't necessarily want to put it and say that the Air Force and the Navy take care of their people, but that's what my dad said. And, and I wouldn't... I'm not gonna say the army take don't take care of their people, y'all, because you you have to, you have to take care of your people. Or you're gonna I lose am, them. I am prior army, so I'm not gonna say they didn't take care of me while I was there. Yeah, because they really did take care of me because they they not. But they've improved a lot since they have. back when my dad was in. You know, my dad was in um, when the Berlin Wall fell. He's actually got a piece of it because he was over there in Germany really? when it happened. Um, so you know he he got out. In eighty nine, so the I was one year old when my dad got out of the. So the your army. dad got out in eighty nine. Mm -hmm. I had only been in two years. Yeah, and he I was out at the out of, when your dad got out. I was at the NTC out at um, Porter at the NTC. Okay, yeah, he he got out um, as signal port for work. Okay, uh, I did a signal in Germany, but I. Hey, loud truck. <laughs> When I was in Germany, I did Signal Corps. Okay. I was in the Signal Corps. I did supply for the Signal Corps. Gotcha. But our, um, our unit disbanded. I don't know why every time I go somewhere, we were disbanding stuff. Like when I went to Fort Irwin, well, they had just built a new hospital. So I was actually in the process of help. I helped build one of the new hospitals. Yeah. It's probably a true clinic, true medical center now. Because I saw some pictures, some new pictures of a girl. <laughs> I was like, ooh. Yeah. But they, they have, like, because I, you know, growing up, obviously, in Augusta, I had friends that I went to school with that their moms or dads were in the Army, and I'd go and stay the night in their housing units, and I, and I remember um, it was just, they were older. It's not that they weren't taken care of, per se. They were just older, and, you know, as I got into my own military service. It seemed like go, the Air Force always tearing down, building up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, we got, um... Look, I used to um, hang out on Bowling Air Force Base in D.C. <laughs> yeah. So. You know. Man. And they had, you know, the um, the Navy um, stay there. The, um... Was it CBs? What do they call them? Um, the Color Guard. The Navy Color Guard. Oh, the, yeah, the Honor Guard? Yeah, the Honor Guard. Mm -hmm. They live there. Oh, my God. All of those guys that worked at the command uh, post, command district of Washington, that yeah. post over the Navy Yard, they all lived over there. Girl, it was always good eating at the Air Force, <laughs> the Air Force show. Yeah, all times of night, go over there. What you want to eat? You want breakfast, lunch, or dinner? It's like yeah. good Jesus. You can go in there and have breakfast, lunch, or dinner. All times of night, it was yeah. like. Denny's all night long. The yep. Waffle House all night long. And it's a lot long. cheaper. Exactly, exactly. And y'all used to throw the best parties. Them all nighters on the Air Force Base. Good God Almighty! Woo! We we knew how to we knew how to Air, Force, Air Force get down. Yeah. <laughs> they get down. That's where I went all the all nighters at. Then they be serving breakfast right after. <laughs> you be in a you be in a club at seven o'clock in the morning. It'd be like you want breakfast. <laughs> Okay, let's go. <laughs> let's, and they had breakfast right there in the club. Mm -hmm. But now, um, yeah. So, now, we were talking about this the other day. And I'm not going to say where you work. Because I don't want to say where I work. Mm -hmm. um, y'all missed me today, didn't y'all? Yeah, I was wondering where you were at. Y'all going y back to twice a week? Yep. Oh, okay. I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy, y'all do. <laughs> but, 
Um, so yeah, we had this conversation the other day at the job where we were talking about everything going on. Mm -hmm. Would you be willing to go back? Hell yes, absolutely. Because it wouldn't. 9-11 ignited a fire in a lot of us that I wish would come back for America as a whole. Um, it wasn't about a you or me. It wasn't black or white. It wasn't law enforcement or not. It wasn't any of these divisions. After not, We miss 9-12. The day after when America was probably the most united it had been in our time, even our grandparents' time. That's true. That's we miss true. that. We That's miss true. that bond that we shared, not because of you're you and I'm me, but because we are we. And that's something that I really feel like my kids are going to miss out on because we keep letting other people divide us. Well, if they come to me and they say, hey, we're, we're doing a draft, you have previous military experience, we need you. Okay, you got me. You got me. Because it's not about me. It's about making sure that people like Putin don't come and try and take away my family's freedoms. Because, you know, it's illegal to be gay over in Russia. Completely. Utterly. Mm -hmm. In the country. Yes. It Basically, he has, his dictatorship is so strict that they can't... 2,700 people were arrested for protesting these strikes on the Ukraine. Hold on a second. Russia. Let me make sure that this is still running. Keep it talking. <laughs> um, but Ru Russians are apologetic. The, the the average mass of people, I, I see it all the time on social media. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, Ukraine is taking prisoners, these young military men from Russia. And we've heard reports that a lot of them are apologetic. I'm sorry. I, I'm doing this because I was told to, not because I want to. Um the goal isn't to be, even though we are, the strongest military force in the world. Um, the goal is to help other people maintain or gain the freedoms that we know and love. Have you read the report today? Uh, Switzerland has, is no longer neutral. For the first time in forever? L look it up on your phone. They, they they chose a side. They chose a side. Switzerland chose a side, y'all. Y'all always hear about, I'm Switzerland. Everybody always say, I'm Switzerland, which means I'm neutral. Wow. Switzerland chose a side. There it is right there, 45 minutes ago. Switzerland will forego Swiss neutrality and adopt the same sanctions as EU against Russia. That's... So you know it has to be bad mm -hmm. that Switzerland took a side. Yeah. Because they're famous for being a neutral territory. So that's that's crazy. But oh, I think a lot of people are realizing that Putin's a bully. I mean, he really is. I mean, I don't know the man. I just judge you on your actions. And, of course, you know, I'm really not supposed to judge people. But, you know, when you go and you attack a country just because you feel like it should be yours. Well, the thing is, you got to think about it. Ukraine has become closer to the NATO. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're trying to gain NATO status. And Putin don't want them to get NATO status. Because then he can't come and beat up on them. Plus, on top of that, they have a large stockpile of natural resources. And Chernobyl. I mean, let's just but they throw have, that out there. But they have, no, but, um, you know, um, yeah. Ukraine has a large stockpile yeah, of, natural, right, of natural resources. Yeah. And if they become NATO friendly, then Russia can't control those natural resources. Yeah. And and I think at the end of the day, you know, I I would hope for some kind of peaceful or at least less than World War Three resolution to this whole situation because I mean, do I really want to leave my family to go? No, I don't. But if they need me to, I will. That's that's always been the stance that I've taken in life is um, and I think Toby Keith said it best, I don't want to die for you, but if dying's asked me, I'll bear that cross with honor because freedom don't come free. And that's exactly how I've always felt about my service and I, I've always tried to find, even now, outside of the military, I still find ways to serve my community. 
through my job and through other opportunities that may arise down the road, whether it's, you know, maybe a, a transfer somewhere else or something like that. But service was really driven into me when I was in the military. I think service was driven into me before the military. Mine started with growing up in the church, mm -hmm. and I've always been very active in my family's church. Um, you know, I'm not originally from here. Yeah. I'm originally from Washington, D.C. Then I was in the Sea Cadets. Okay. Yep. And then I did a lot of other um, activities in reference to school. So I've always been... Um, Service-minded. Service-minded. Yeah. 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 Since I've been here, what I run for school board. I help with. Back, I'm on the backpack ministry. Mm -hmm. I'm on the ministerial alliance. Yeah. You know. You know all the other stuff I do. Yeah. I'm always doing stuff for other people. I don't know. I can get time for myself and my own family. Yeah. It's hard sometimes. But um, I do what I do, and and I do for what I do for this town is because I live here now. This mm -hmm. is my community. Yep. Yeah. And I'm going to do what I have to do for my community. Yeah. You know what, honey? You got any last words you want to put out there? Um, I just want to say for anybody that has contemplated joining the military, even with the types of things that we've got going on in the world right now, it really is one of the most fulfilling ways to not only get out there and do something that maybe you haven't done before, but it's also a way to serve a higher purpose and it's got a lot of benefits. I mean, let me ask you this: Have you been outside of the states? No, I have not. Oh, I, I did. I never made it. I almost had a, a deployment to Dubai, but my retraining came up before I was able to do that. Oh man! Um, but I wanted to. I wanted to go. Um, but you, you get, you really do. You get a chance to travel. I have, in my 34 years on this earth, I have seen 38 of 50 states. A lot of that's because of the military. You know, you don't really get to think about the things that you miss out on if you stay inside your your bubble. Um, you know, I was able to take my brother to L.A. He came out for Christmas break one year while I was in Arizona. I took him to L.A., took him to Disneyland. We got to see, you know, the Walk of Fame, and it was New Year's Eve, so we got to ring in the New Year's at Disneyland. That's something cool. my parents never got to do. That's so cool. it gives you a lot of opportunities the pay is good, so you get a good standard of living, not just while you're on base, but what, you know, the, when well, you get to live off base, take, too. Take, take that back. Take that back. I don't know. <laughs> the pay is good for most people mm -hmm. if, you, if you're if you a single person, mm -hmm. but if you actually have a family. Uh, the, the things have changed. I was a single airman, and I living off base so with my bah my bas and my base pay i was bringing home over 1600 dollars a paycheck as a single airman they add to it if you have that, that's up true. to four that's total. true but what i'm saying is well i guess when i was in you know i knew people they were on food stamps see i, I think but, a lot of that's changed now. but they had they were on food stamps because they had a lot of kids though too well and see that's the other thing you got to think about they only pay you extra up to four total people in your household. So you got yourself, your spouse, and two kids. After that, it doesn't go up anymore. You got you. So you have to learn how to live within your means. You got you. Um, but a way to do that is by living on base housing. Using the commissary for what it's for. You know, going to the grocery store there on base and getting their little bits of discount here and there that they have versus Walmart or Kroger or somewhere like that. Um but it really is it and, and you don't have to pay for health insurance that's true you that health insurance is a big kicker mm -hmm. it, when it you really don't is. have to pay for doctor doctor's visits mm -hmm. that's a big part of your, your 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 budget right there yeah well my honey i'm about to go this has been fun y'all yes. this has been another version another uh episode of the veterans lounge with myself vivian jennings and maria key <laughs> Y'all, this is my girl. Um, I thank you for letting me come and sit on your porch. Yeah, anytime. I love these rocket chairs. I want, you know I'm about to give me two. Go ahead. I'm, I ain't paying for them. I'm about to give me two. <laughs> yes, ma'am. 
Uh, but you guys, as my mom always says, live, love, and laugh. And as my daddy always says, Lord, make us a blessing so we can be a blessing. And I hope this interview was a blessing to somebody. Y'all, I'm about to go home and chop and screw this up and make it look good. Girl, you know one of your co-workers is, is, is one of my one of my subscribers. No. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I'll hear about this once it airs. <laughs> she won, She actually won a contest. Really? Very cool. Yeah, she won a contest. But I'm going to have to talk to you about some of your co-workers. Wink, wink, wink. 